This is a topic that was in our History Talk voting that I really wanted to win, and then I remembered, wait, it's my channel, I can just do it. Today I'm going to cover the split of Eastern and Western Germany after World War II and how it directly led to the Cold War. We think of the end of World War II in Europe as, yay, we saved people, we're heroes. Not untrue, but it's more complicated and nuanced. The end of World War II in Germany was marked by the USSR committing atrocities against German women and children and other civilians. Not fun. That's a bit of a trigger warning too, and so when I get into that, I will let you know so you can skip that if you want to. After VE Day, the Allied powers began splitting up what was left of Germany. A significant portion of it was given to Russia. The rest was divided between the USA, England, and um, France. There was a lot of distrust, and the Russians were super impressed with those bombs we just dropped. Hindsight is 2020 on today's History Talk. Before getting into the events of the Cold War itself, we have to start with the end of World War II, VE Day, and the fall of Berlin. As I mentioned in the first video, I'm going to talk about some pretty upsetting stuff. I'll try to give you a trigger warning so that you can bow out if you want to. So the fall of Berlin happened between April 16th and May 2nd, 1945. Highly recommend the movie Downfall if you want to learn more about that. The Americans had come in from the west, and the Soviet army was coming in from the east. Making it so that the German army was fighting on two different fronts, and they were already weakened. But the Red Army made it into Berlin first. And a lot of atrocities were committed against civilian women specifically. I don't think I need to elaborate more on what those were. The entire time though, Stalin was incredibly nervous because even though he had teamed up with the Allies, he didn't trust them. And at the end of the day, his main goal was spreading communism. But an unhealthy trust was developing between the Germans and the Soviets. It's just the beginning. Stalin was an incredibly paranoid human being. At the end of the day, Stalin's main objective in this whole thing was to spread communism. But unfortunately for him, the Germans who were being occupied by the USSR did not like the Red Army for good reason. They were brutalizing women and children. So Stalin basically gives his troops a curfew and tells them to knock it off, but you know, the damage was already done by this point. As for the other allies who had teamed up with Russia, mostly out of necessity, from 1944 until 1945, they worked on dividing up Germany. The divisions were solidified at the Potsdam Conference. Germany was divided into occupation zones, and Berlin was actually in Russia's zone, so they basically just divided Berlin itself up into factions as well, even though it was in Russian territory. But nobody, nobody liked Stalin. He was a megalomaniac, paranoid, and kind of evil. Things are just going to escalate. This is a map of what happened to Germany in terms of division at the Potsdam Conference. Over the east, you have the Soviets. Partly in the east and partly in the west, you have the Americans down here. Berlin is up here. You have the British sector and the French sector. Berlin itself would also be divided, but more about that later. Immediately, there started to be some issues. It's not like they were doing this for selfless reasons, but Britain and America wanted to rebuild the German economy. They wanted to get factories going and strengthen the currency. Stalin saw this as a way of pushing capitalism, which, let's be real, it totally was. But on the other hand, Stalin's got citizens starving to death in East Germany. You also had people trying to defect from the East to the West. And when they were starving, Britain and America started airdropping food to the people in West Germany. This was in 1948, during a blockade by the Soviets. It's 1961. The Soviets were losing about a thousand skilled workers a day because they were getting the heck out of there to go to West Germany. Because there were jobs and life was pretty decent on that side of the fence. Stalin has died by this point. And now the Russians are under the leadership of Khrushchev, Nikita Khrushchev. In August of 61, Khrushchev has given the go-ahead to Walter Ulbricht, I think I'm saying that correctly, to start sealing off access points between East and West Berlin. The Soviets constructed a 96 mile long wall of concrete that divided East Berlin and West Berlin, separating families and making it impossible for anyone to defect over to the American side. That escalated quickly. There were demonstrations of people from the West Berlin trying to get them to take down the wall because they'd suddenly been cut off from their family members, but they fell on deaf ears. In an attempt to avoid escalation, the Allied powers did nothing. Nothing about the wall. It would be easy to say that the split of Germany caused the Cold War. 
that isn't entirely true because the tensions were already there. It just escalated the situation. So the wall's been constructed. And in 1963, President John F. Kennedy gives one of his most famous speeches, just a few feet from the wall. As a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Billy. And yes, I heard the legend that he said, I am a jelly donut, and what that's what it actually meant, but no, 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 that's not what it means. It means exactly what he said. Although apparently there is a donut that's called a Berliner. I want to try that. Kennedy's romanticized words do nothing to alleviate the situation. Because seriously, around this time, they're just making the wall taller so people can't climb over it. But now we're going to get to the good stuff. That's right, history talkers. It's time for espionage. Kids, it's time for my favorite thing in history. Espionage. This stuff gets me so hyped that I don't know why. Obviously, a cold war was cold because there's no violence. At least officially. A lot of stuff is simmering under the surface. And we know that the KGB was incredibly active during the cold war. They were monitoring everything on the east side of the Berlin Wall. There was also the East German Stasi who was keeping an eye on their citizens. And on the western side of the fence, you have the Americans setting up shop. And this is where you get into the Tinker Tailor soldier spy stuff that just gets me like super hyped for some reason, I don't know why. It was hard, we had Checkpoint Charlie and it was hard for people to cross the Berlin borders there. If you remember a few months ago, I did a video about number stations. Shortwave frequencies with secret messages that were sent. Let's revisit number stations and spying in our next video. The Cold War lasted into the early 90s. But during the period of like the late 60s to the early 90s itself, Eastern Germany was actually kind of spying on itself. Of course you had the Soviets, but you also had the Stasi who was basically there to know everything about everyone who was in East Germany. But it wasn't a peaceful time because demonstrators were trying to overthrow the system. And you had the Americans spying on the other side, which gets into my favorite topic, number stations. East Germany has one of the most famous number stations, or had. I don't think it's still operating. It was something called the Gong Station. Now, we're not exactly sure who operated it, but we think it was conspirators who were trying to get information from East Germany to West Germany to the Americans. It's called the Gong Station. Number stations are basically shortwave radio frequencies that send out numbers repeatedly to somebody who has a code book on the other side. Tones preceded a list of numbers that were read. Here's that. We're gonna take the conflict out of Germany a little bit and check out the relationship between US and Russia at this time. Chances are most of you were not alive when some of this stuff happened. Even I was born at the tail end of it. But you have a couple of close calls involving Russia and the United States and their pact of mutually assured destruction. That basically means that both of us had nuclear weapons and if one of us used it, we were just going to blow the other one into oblivion and just effectively take life off the planet. That's kind of stupid. The U.S. had had a couple close calls in this regard. First, there was a Cuban Missile Crisis in which the USSR was transporting missiles to communist Cuba and we got wind of it and it looked like we were about to get blown all the way the hell up. And we would later have another close call in the 80s, but that was actually more of an accident than anything else. During this time, though, the Russians were definitely their own worst enemies and had no PR skills whatsoever. They were executing people who tried to climb over the wall. Public opinion was backfiring. In the late 1980s, towards the tail end of the Cold War, the Soviet Union started falling apart. The sad thing is I'm old enough to kind of remember this because I had to get rid of my globe because it was no longer the USSR, it was now Russia again. Gorbachev is now in power, and other countries are going to be breaking away. Belarus, uh, Ukraine, Georgia. So the Soviet Union is falling. And that meant that it was time to give up control of Berlin. In 1987, President Ronald Reagan went to Germany to encourage Gorbachev to tear down the wall. I mean, that's exactly what he said. Mr. Gorbachev... Tear down this wall. That did not immediately um, happen. Gorbachev was dragging his feet, but the Germans had had enough of his crap. So, on November 9th, 1989, two years later, the Germans just started tearing down the wall themselves. Reunification was in order. In the aftermath of World War II, Winston Churchill coined the phrase the Iron Curtain. And I know you remember that from history class, but let me remind you what that is. Germany wasn't the only country that the USSR kind of took over. They basically had taken over Czechoslovakia, 
And as always, if there's a country you don't want to be in Europe at any time, it's Poland. They took over Poland. And the Communist Party kept a stronghold in Eastern Germany and tried to assure people that they were going to loosen travel restrictions, but they just got tired of it, said F you all, and then ripped down the wall. I mean, the border guards kind of really didn't know what to do, so they just kind of let it happen. That was the beginning of the end for the Soviet Union. They would be gone by the 90s. The Cold War was just a really bizarre time in history, and I'm glad I was there for part of it, even though I was a kid, because it fascinated me then, too. It's a war, but it's not a war. It's a war of ideologies and trying to outsmart the other like a weird game of chess. But at the end of the day, the USSR basically did themselves in, and Germany was reunified.